What do Kevin Hart be doing, bro? I thought the man's just be vibing. Damn. First it was Cat Williams on his head. Now it's Monique. We gonna find out, bro. Go crazy. No one back on. Kevin Hart. Now you know when Cat Williams said gatekeepers? Yeah. Kevin Hart, mm -hmm. I do his um, podcast. Yes. And I want y'all to re-listen to the podcast so you can hear it for yourself. When he first comes on, he says, you're like my mother, you're like my aunt, you're like my sister, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we do the podcast. We speak about the Tyler Perry situation. Oprah Winfrey, he said, I don't really know Oprah, but I'm gonna reach out to Tyler. I appreciate that. Kevin kept his word. He reached out to Tyler Perry. Kevin Hart called me back about maybe a week or so later. He said, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said he don't want to revisit it. He said, but I tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just move past that and let's just do great things. So whatever That's you, what Kevin said. I want you to hear me, Kevin Hart. Let's move past that, Mo. Let's do some great things together. Don't even worry about it. Whatever y'all want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know what you want to do. Now, let me say that before we go any further, because okay. I want to make sure I give Kevin Hart his proper credit. When my oh, shoot. family was up against the wall, Kevin Hart wrote us a check and said, here you go. We're forever grateful for that. When we were able to give it back, we said, brother, we appreciate you with some interest on top because I don't ever want nobody to think like they me and my husband. Yeah, yeah. So I want to make sure I put that out there. That was, that brother really helped us out when we needed to be helped out. Then when he came back with, I got you. I didn't ask Kevin Hart to do anything. He said, I'll executive produce. I'll partner with you. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol and we're trying to get our talk show back. Mo, whatever it is, I got you. Now, Kevin Hart is one of the biggest entertainers right now in the world, Correct. right? And was then. We got off the phone with Kevin Hart. We called in the mall immediately and said, Kevin Hart said, whatever we want to do, he got us. He's going to partner executive use. They was like, oh, this is incredible because when you put Kevin Hart's name on it, you already know what it is. Correct. Damn. Two weeks go by. We get a call from in the mall. In the mall says, we just got a call from Kevin Hart's manager, Dave Becky. And Dave Becky said, Kevin doesn't want anything to do with Monique. So whatever she told y'all, he doesn't want to do anything with her, nothing. You know, he doesn't want any any kind of relationship with Monique. Damn, you told me that little man lied to you? That's crazy. That's wild. Me personally, wouldn't let that happen. So what changed between the two weeks and when, and, and plus he gave you a check, you gave the money back, then said he would partner with you, executive produce, whatever you need, Mo, hey, we got you. So what transpired or what do you think transpired between then that two, that two week period? Well, soon as we got off the phone and they told us what Kevin manager, David Becky said, I called Kevin Hart immediately. I said, hey, baby. We just got off the phone with Endemol and they said Dave Becky called them up and said, you don't want anything to do with me. He said, Mo, that's that's a miscommunication. I can tell you right now. I said, wait a minute. Are you OK, though, with this white man calling them up? Getting in between our relationship at something you said, he said, Mo, I'm, that's a miscommunication and we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. That's crazy. You can't say he forgot too. You cannot say he forgot. That's a, that's a big L right there, you feel me? That's a big L. That's tough. Come on, little Kev. And you at the top right now. They gonna come they all gonna come and get you. Bro, let's just let's continue, bro. So that's what we're faced with. When you allow somebody to come in between a relationship with a woman that you said, I'm like your mother, you said, I'm like these things. I didn't ask you for that. So everything that that baby was saying, sitting here, everything he was saying was on the up and up. Because when you hear people say, get the anger out your heart. Oh, man, no one's saying he's lying. No one ever said I was lying. It's so easy to discount 
and devalue because of what we look like. Right. However, when it comes to Tyler Perry, I will not allow you to discount or devalue because that is your voice on that audio. Mm -hmm. Remember on Good Times mm -hmm. when Penny's mother was whooping up on yep. her and then and she had recorded it? Mm -hmm. That's you on tape. Damn. So how does it go from you saying you're... Penny, a.k.a. Janet Jackson, right? Right? I haven't watched Good Time in the, Good Times in a minute, you feel me? They used to call me JJ or whatever, because I, I used to build, I used to be built like him. Maybe I still do. I don't know, man. I'm tall or whatever. Point is, if you tell someone something without them asking, they're expecting you to stand on business, you feel me? That's why I'd be like, when you ask me for money, right? For example, don't I don't actually do it. I'm just saying this is an example. Because this is what I actually used to do back in the day nowadays i don't i don't give out bread like that but look back in the day i used to tell people this if you ask me for money right i'm gonna give it to you but don't say i'm gonna pay you back if i'm not expect if i'm not saying pay me back simple because once you say you're gonna pay me back i'm expecting you to pay me back you feel me but if you say you won't pay me back and don't pay me back, then you're not you're not standing on business. You feel me? Sometimes when I give out bread, I just do it for free, you know, because I'm a kind person. But once you say I will pay you back and you don't, you feel me? Like real talk. And that's my my example of what happened. You feel me? Kevin said he was going to do something for her. She didn't ask, but he said he was going to do it. What happened? She was waiting for it. And look, two years later, it's wicked. You feel me? Now she on your head. Let's, let's continue, though. You're going to give me an apology. To now, I owe you an apology. But what do you want an apology for? What, what, what could I possibly owe you an apology for when you've admitted? See, when Lee Daniels says to me, because Cookie from the, the show Empire, yeah. I was offered that role. Now, Taraji tore it up, baby. Right. It Listen right. here. However, I was offered that. Then Felita called me back and say, baby girl, they said you're too difficult to work with. But you hear on the audio that a man told David Talbert I was difficult to work with. Do you see how that right. cost my family? Yes. And with no accountability? Because, oh, it's the great Tyler Perry? No, you've got to be accountable for that. Oprah Winfrey, you've got to be accountable for the things you've done with my family. You've got to be accountable for that. Is there any relationship between you and Tyler and you and Oprah currently? No. When we have our juggernauts, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Steve Harvey, the Kevin Hart, these are our juggernauts of our community. These are the people that our babies say, when I grow up, I want to be, be that. Yes. I want to be like that. So we have to call those people to the mat and say, listen, what are you teaching our babies? You're feeding poison because you're showing them your private jet. I'm going to show you my mansion. I'm going to show you my fancy cars. But my character is shot and I'm bankrupt. I got a lot of money in my bank. I have more zeros than some of them can, than we can imagine. But their character, they are bankrupt. Damn. Those are bankrupt people. Damn. So everybody that Kat sat right here and told you about, I can't wait to see your next interviews with those people. They ain't coming on now, Mo. <laughs> I have. They not gonna do it. Well. Look, I've already done Steve. I have a relationship with Steve. He do him again. Do him again. And I'm going to say this. I'm trying to get Oprah and, uh, and Tyler, though. Baby, we got him. Y'all, come on. Stop playing. They ain't coming on more fakes to you. You know how. And I don't want to put you on a spot, but I'm going to say it because <coughs> I appreciate you as a black man and what you're doing. Thank you. If you are my friend. Mm -hmm. And someone says to me, Monique Shannon Sharp wronged me. And you my friend? Yeah. yeah. I'ma call my friend. You can come to me. And I'ma say, hey, is what they saying true? And if you get to him and Han, I'ma tell you, till you fix it, you and I can't talk. Because if you'll do them that way, you do it'll be a matter of time before you do it to me. So if Steve Harvey is your friend, mm -hmm. 
You call your friend up and you ask him, is what our sister saying right, man? Because if it is, we can't do that to her. If that's our sister. See, it took a transgender named T.S. Madison. It was a guy named Jamaica Carter. We, Jamaica Carter and our mutual friend. Hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. I don't know what she's talking about. She's, she's talking about something crazy. But look. She will out telling you, you got to pick a side. <laughs> and if you can't, like, look, 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 look. Listen, you feel me? She's saying you gotta pick a side, cause if you if, if if your friend or like Steve Harvey, right? If he's really in the wrong and you still cool with him, he was an L man's too. That's literally what she's saying. You feel me? Like real, like real talk. So you really gotta pick a side. Poor Shannon, hate to be you. It's a cold world. Jamaica caught and our friends. Mm -hmm. T.S. Madison was a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. So Jamaica called me and said, would you mind doing T.S. Madison's show? I go do T.S. Madison's show. Oh, yeah, wait, wait. She said I'm a transgender. Let's go back. If that's our sister. See, it took a transgender named T.S. Madison. It was a guy named Jamaica Carter. We, Jamaica Carter and our mutual friend. Jamaica Carter and our friends. Mm -hmm. T.S. Madison was a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. So Jamaica called me and said, would you mind doing T.S. Madison's show? I go do T.S. Madison's show. When I tell T.S. Madison when the camera cuts, I said, listen, your friend is wrong. She said, Monique Lee Daniels is my friend. I said, then you need to call your friend and tell him to fix this shit. She said, I will. Within a couple of days, who did I get a call from? Lee, Lee Daniels. See, that's a friend. Mm -hmm. That's a true friend that's saying, I love you so much that I want to make sure that's not on your heart or your conscience. Let's fix it. Let's make it right. So when people ask Lee now, when we did the deliverance together, how was it to work with Monique? It was as if we had never parted ways because he fixed it. He owned it and he took accountability for it. I can't now keep you to the cross because you've owned it. Right. I've had to be forgiven. Right. So I appreciate mm -hmm. the, that someone had grace and mercy with me. So I'm going to have that with other people when they take accountability for what they've done. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Auntie was speaking facts, you feel me? Y'all can't tell me she wasn't for real. Tell me how you feel about this joint. Let's get to the point. Tell me what to uh, react to, like real talk. I'm finna go crazy with y'all. Let's get it. <laughs>